Okay, so, 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 so. Again, something new. One day there was something new criticism and today there is something new historicism. <clears throat> new historicism. <clears throat> See, first of all, we should break words. That, uh, so that we can know that what is uh, the meaning of these words and what are they denoting. <clears throat> new means new. Obviously new. Historicism. Historicism is telling you that there is something related to history. Now what is relating to history? Now as in new criticism, I told you that uh, you know new critics were too much concerned about language and text. Now this was a reaction against new criticism. New criticism was a moment dwelt in the mid decades of 20th century and it was at the end of that end of the same century. It was dwelt in 1980 and in 1990s it was at <clears throat> Wig. So it was a reaction against new criticism as I told you so obviously they must not be focused about or concerned about language although they are but their main focus their main concern was context not the text i mean not only the text but context context means that what was the political context social and economic so these contexts are, uh, you know, very uh, famous contexts, which are always there. So it was not a political moment, just like cultural materialism. I will tell you about that as well. That was a political moment. But new criticism was not at all a political moment. It was an American moment, just like new criticism. And it was concerned about the context, means the historical context, you can say historical aspects we can say and the context in which the text was originated just like new criticism in new criticism new critics wanted to go very deep into the origin of language but these new historicists went too deep in the these in these political social economic and other contexts of the text in which time that text was originally originated okay so a little bit facts about new historicism this was coined by stephen greenblatt he was again an american critic stephen green blatt okay stephen greenblatt so he wrote a work renaissance self fashioning renaissance self fashioning colon subtitle from more more is thomas more to shakespeare so this work came in 1980 so in this book renaissance self fashioning from more to shakespeare he coined this term new historicism who Stephen Green Blatt. Now there is one another writer whose name is uh, J. W. Liver. J. W. L. E. V. E. R. Liver. So his works were also related to somewhat related to, to new historicism. He wrote a work. Uh, the name of the work was the Tragic State. Tragic state colon study in Jacobian drama. Jacobian drama 1971. So you can learn this name liver from the liver which we have in our body and uh, when we drink so much so our liver is affected by uh, our um, you know that habit of drinking so just like that the tragic state so state is our body tragic is our liver when we drink so much so you can correlate the names of the text and the books with the writers names like this so this is my style i 
you know i cram all these things by correlating them just like objective correlative i told you okay all right so jw lever's book see these new historicists this stephen greenblatt and all they were they used to criticize or they used to work more upon uh, these shakespearean uh, plays right so then there was another guy louis l o u i s e louis montrose you must have heard about his name louis montrose so he was a great guy he is also related to new historicism he said one thing he said one line which is very famous and very meaningful at this moment he said that new historicism is a combination of the textuality <clears throat> the textuality of history and historicity historicity of text so this is very famous line textuality of history and historicity of text so now this line is telling you that for these people textuality of history was also important means text was not something which was not important for them but text was something which was important for them but text was not the only thing which was important for them for them important was the historicity of text as well which was not important for new critics they were focused they were concerned about text only and not the historicity and the context of the text right so they used to now one another fact or factor about new historicists was that and sometimes we compare them to new uh, to old histor historicists also so just like the name is suggesting that this is new historicism so uh, there are chances that yes there was uh, old historicism also so if we compare old historicism and new historicism then the biggest biggest you know difference is that new historicism gave equal weight to literary literary and non literary works which was the biggest difference between old historicism and new historicism so literary and non literary works were equal for them if they wanted to judge a work they used to go deep into the context of that time when that work was written the history of the text and the textuality of history and they used to study parallelly there was a kind of see there this new historicism is a parallel study of literary and non literary works but old historicists did not give much attention to non literary works so they were not biased new historicists were not biased they took equally literary as well as non literary works so old old historicism uh, is represented by one writer uh, his name is e m w tilliard so he has written two works which were important and which uh, were the representative works of old historicism uh, and the name of the work is Mm, Elizabethan world picture. Elizabethan world picture. One work, nineteen forty-three, and another work is Shakespeare's historical plays. Nineteen forty-four. I have a little doubt in this work, so let me confirm. Elizabethan world picture. I have a picture in my phone as well. Hmm. This picture is like this. Okay. So the name is the Elizabethan world picture. I am right. I am totally right. Elizabethan world picture, nineteen forty-three, and Shakespeare's historical plays, nineteen forty-four. Okay. so now uh, if we talk about michel foucault was also one guy he was a post structuralist so michel foucault's concept is of episteme so episteme means knowledge 
and uh, this Michel Foucault also used to go deep into the context, into history, to look for the meaning. Episteme means knowledge. So he wanted to confirm the knowledge that the established idea or the prevailing idea, that what is the reason behind the prevailing idea? What is the reason behind the present scenario or the present idea? So he used to go back to the history to, you know, confirm or to research that what was the reason of this idea that we are following today. So that was also a part of, you know, that historicity of that phenomena. So just like that, new historicists also followed that idea also, Michel Foucault also, and they also believed in the idea of Yex Derrida. Yex Derrida was uh, a deconstructionist and he said that there is nothing outside the text. It means that for him, everything was inside the text. Everything was within the text. So they also believed that there is nothing outside the text, but they used to go in the historicity of the text. They used to go in the context. For them, the king of that time was important. For them, the political aspects of that time was important. For them, the writer's background was also important. But for new critics, only the text was important. The textuality only, not the historicity. Right? So these were the basic differences. And there is uh, another guy, Harold Aram or Aram or Aram, what is the pronunciation? I don't know. Harold Aram Wieser. He also uh, wrote a work in 1989, The New Historicism. The New Historicism. So this was a volume of essays, The New Historicism in 1989. And Louis Montrose, I told you about Louis Montrose, I will tell you his works as well. So he wrote one essay, Louis Montrose, he wrote one essay, uh, The Midsummer's Night Dream, Midsummer Night's Dream or something like this. So this was the essay and one another essay was shaping fantasies shape, shaping fantasies of Elizabethan culture culture then the subtitle is gender gender power form so this was the essay Shaping Fantasies of Elizabethan Culture, Gender Power uh, Form, One Essay and The Midsummer Night's Dream. Now, another thing that I forgot to tell you is that, that cortex or anecdotes were also important for new historicists. Now, what are anecdotes? Anecdote is a tale or a story when a person tells about his life's one of the incidents. Just like, for example, once upon a time, this is a real story. I was riding my bike. So behind what I saw is that there was a black Scorpio and there was a kind of minister sitting in that car and they were honking so much like the, the siren was. So I said, you wanted to go before me? WTF? Then come, I'll show you the way. So that was another thing that I was charged with uh, rash riding and uh, Chalan and all those things. So this is a kind of, you know, incident that happened with me. So I am telling this incident to someone. In Hindi, we call it Kissa, right? So anecdotes are Kissas. So for them, anecdotes were also important and anecdotes for them were taken as cortex. And another thing was context. One thing was context that we all know that it was very important. And these anecdotes were core texts for them, for their study, for their study of a text. These anecdotes were the core texts. Just like Louis Montrose in his uh, this essay, The Midsummer Night's Dream, he says that here I recount uh, uh, an Elizabethan dream. But this dream is not Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, but a dream which was dreamt by a person on uh, January 23rd, 1597. 
okay so something like that so that was the anecdote anecdote this is the spelling a n e c d o t e this that was the anecdote that someone told him louis montrose someone told him that anecdote which he took as quote text and this helped him while analyzing that particular text and which became context for him so maybe i am not uh, you know forgetting anything so that's all i think for today about new historicism let me check once again if i am leaving something okay so that's all i think everything is done so that's all about the con concept of uh, new historicism i think uh, everything is clear to you you are getting what i want you to get from my lectures so thank you so much for today and if you if you want to follow me on instagram you can you can just simply type dana multitasker and i'll be there my real name is saurabh thakur and you can follow me there and do not talk about studies everywhere please please because this is so hectic you know काफी मेहनत लगती है हर एक वीडियो को बनाने में वैसे बस चलो मैं कॉन्टेक्स्ट से अलग चला गया है ना बट दैट्स ओके सो ओके बाय एंजॉय टेक केयर